Hi everybody, Craig here. Welcome to episode 7 of my 6 player free for all Age of Wonders 3 playthrough series. In this series, myself and 5 AI opponents set to Emperor difficulty are playing a true free for all game where there are no set teams. In this series, I'm playing as the Nomad Sorcerer, Quora the Desert Rose. In our last episode, we've managed to position our troops right outside the throne city here of Melenis, who is our High Elf Necromancer opponent. And you can see that we've got Quora leading a very powerful stack with a rock uh, and a few other tier 2 units here, as well as Karzan the Ambient our sorcerer hero, and he's leading a very good stack as well. And we are basically right on the doorstep. You can see that Melenis doesn't have a ton that's protecting the city, although with the walls, it is going to be a bit of a challenge. So mostly just tier two units and the one hero. Unfortunately, I can't see Melenis anywhere around the throne. So even if we take the throne city, we're still going to have to probably try to hunt down Melenis. But um, in, any way, in any case, we are in very good shape here and hopefully can deal a very serious blow to Melenis in the next turn. Now, before I jump into the episode, I did just want to give a quick shout out to Death, who left an excellent comment on the previous episode. Death had mentioned that, and this was in follow-up to a question that I had posed at the end of the last episode, and that was in regards to, and I'm just going to pan over here. So, I have my Rogue stack, which is quite powerful, and we've been acquiring additional units as well. And then we have my Theocrat over here, who is also very, very powerful. And I was thinking what I could do is bring both of these forces, both armies, down towards this city here. And if I zoom out, you can see that this is the throne city of Kurzu, which belongs to my Draconian Theocrat opponent, Caradon Duraga. Now, I could potentially bring these units down and try to lay siege to Caradon's throne. However, what Death is suggesting, and I think this is a great idea, is to wait to decide what to do in regards to Caradon until things have kind of progressed or at least started to resolve in my war with Melenis. And I think that's really, really good advice, especially because I don't know exactly how tough it's going to be to hunt down Melenis and, and eliminate her. Um, it looks like hopefully the Siege of the Throne won't be too bad, but I think it'd be good to at least kind of get a better grasp of how that's going before I decide to try to commit to another fight here. Uh, in addition, I've tried previously to make peace with Caradon. He is uh, leaning towards a good alignment, and he, we have a respectful relationship currently, so it might even be worth trying to pursue more of a diplomatic relationship with him. Death also mentioned that one thing I could as well do is kind of position my troops near the city to kind of start getting them ready for the eventual siege if I choose to go that path. So really good ideas there, and we'll kind of see how things pan out. Death also mentioned that the Dwarf Sorcerer opponent, and that is... Brock Goldran uh, is an, has an evil alignment and will probably end up eventually declaring war on me. And I know his throne city is somewhere over here, I think. I'm not sure if... I don't think it's Dustara. It might... Well, no, it's not showing up there. So it's probably one of these two here that I can see. So um, I know that he's pretty powerful and he's probably going to be pretty mad at me eventually. So I may end up at war with him whether I like it or not. So just another consideration. A big thank you to Death for the excellent comments and suggestions. We are going to jump into the episode. All right, so last time we had left it, everybody's pretty much done all their movement, as you can see here. So um, the only real big decision I think we had left, I'm just going to pan around and make sure I don't have any movement left. Uh, I think we had pretty much resolved everything. Yeah, our rogue is done moving. Um, our theocrat is out of movement, as far as I remember. Right. Yeah, it's too bad. We were one short of getting to the haste berries. We, we could do it. We would just have to leave behind... Oh, shoot. We would have to leave behind, like, half the army to do it. So not worth trying to um, speed up and get that done. Um, so let's pick our research choice. Now, um, we had a couple of different options here. I think I'm probably going to go with basic seafaring and just get that one done. It's just a single turn. Uh, we now have access to magical structures. Let's check this one out. The Empire develops ways to tap into surplus mana leaks from magical sites. Treasure sites and mana nodes within its domain generate an additional three mana. Now, that would be very helpful as I've been relying a lot on my mana for summoning units and using spells, things like that. And although we've got a decent amount of mana income, this would definitely improve that and make it much better. So um, definitely something I'm going to shoot for. I also eventually want to get School of Teleportation just because 
Um, that's going to give my support units projectile resistance and phase, which is going to make them substantially stronger. So let's grab basic seafaring as our next choice. Um, unfortunately, yeah, I don't really want to spend any gold on this at the moment. So we're just going to have to do merchandise here. Um, oh, we do have some scouting left to do. Okay, well, let's do that. Just cruise. Ooh, and we've got a treasure, ch uh, treasure chest. Nice. Okay, now we have a little bit more gold. We might actually be able to do something. And we have a portal to the Shadow Realm, so let's check that out next turn. Oh, I'm very glad I still have these wisps to move here. So, uh, looks like we've got a, perhaps, dwelling down here. Let's go take a look. Or a city. Pretty big. I'm guessing dwelling. Okay, yeah, it's giants. Let's make contact here. Negotiate. Oh, they'd like gold to... Okay, well, we're not going to pay them at this point. Um, but eventually we may want to make peace. And then what else do we have? Okay, this little guy is just going to keep going between the buildings or the uh, cities here. Head down into the water. Oh, wow. And he's got another one down here. So this Brock Goldran is pretty powerful, uh, evidently. Oh, nice. Okay, and we've got our Wisp in the Shadow Realm still. Um, and I believe we were heading over to make contact with this city up here. And this city we had discovered thanks to a cartographer's tent, if I remember correctly. So let's cruise on over. Nice. Okay, we met the village. Ah, oh, shoot. And they want gold as well. Oh, I'm not as keen on doing that at the moment. So um, who else needs? Oh, nice. Okay, and this uh, wisp can move. So I think maybe what we'll do is, well, we want to head back down this way and see what we can find. I guess now the question becomes, do we head along the road here or do we see what's maybe down south let me just remember exactly where we are so right there's a cave entrance here i wouldn't mind maybe exploring a little bit more kind of in this immediate area so let's see what's down this way Ooh, and there's haste berries let's grab those oh shoot roaming units well we want to get away from them if we can um i will grab these mana crystals and then try to run away from the roaming units as best i can and this is a vault of knowledge here, so we will just keep cruising that direction. Uh, this wisp, we are exploring the magma pools here, which I'm guessing is probably going to result in us getting trapped in here with no way out. But, oh, hang on. Well, we might be able to go that way. We can see. Um, right, and that group still has a bit left of movement, so we'll wait on that. And that's going to do it. So we'll end the turn there. Let's go check out Melenis. I want to watch the throne. And I also need to keep an eye on... There's a few units here, including an Eventide Archer, which is pretty strong, moving through my domain. And I'm a little bit worried about the throne city because we do have some guards for it. But, you know, not really optimal guards, as you can see. We don't really have any defensive structures for the city either. So we just have the wall, uh, wooden wall, which it starts with. So we'll have to keep our eyes on that. So let's end it there and see what happens. All right, it's going to be... You know what? And I, I realized before I ended my turn, I should have reached out to Caradon and, and tried to see if he would uh, accept a um, a peace treaty. Because again, if he accepts it, great. Maybe I can proceed towards an alliance. And if he doesn't, then I probably will proceed to uh, trying to eventually eliminate him with combat. Oh, and I noticed that Caradon has a Arctic Wolf, probably a scout moving up through my area here. So I'm going to have to be careful. I don't have any units guarding my cities over there. Oh, shoot. And we have a domain invasion, I believe, at our throne. Yep. Okay, so that's exactly what I was worried about. Um, oh, and you know what? We are really not in a good position to fight this this stack. This Eventide Archer is going to be a real problem for us, unfortunately. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, well, I guess we can summon our Wisp to aid our throne. Hopefully that's going to be enough. I think I can use some spell casting as well, hopefully in the battle. I will have the walls, and we've got um, a pistol shot with our smuggler and a crossbow shot with our civic guard. So we will have some ranged attacks to use, but that's a little scary. Um, okay, lots of things have happened here. Let's check out the alliance proposal first things first. Nice. Okay, so this is a draconian city in the Shadow Realm. I will happily absorb them as a vassal. That's great. Um, 
Let's see, we've got the observatory and the laboratory both finished. Uh, the, this city would like to join us, but the, the problem is I don't want to absorb them until I've gotten rid of this spawning structure and cleared out the Shadow Realm a little bit more, um, you know, hopefully vigorously. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Orlanesi has grown into a village. Okay, that's great. So that's uh, got another mana node in our territory, which is huge. Um, the domain invasion we know about. As I said, the Wisp, we're going to just summon to the throne to try to provide a bit more protection. Um, good news is, like I said, I think for combat spells, yes, we have Fireball, which would be very helpful, especially since we're up against the undead. And so even the Eventide Archer, I believe. Oh, it does have some fire protection. That's a bit annoying. Um, that's inherent due to its uh, the fact that it does a lot of fire and spirit damage, I'm assuming. Uh, it does have spirit weakness, which unfortunately we don't have any way to really inflict. Um, that said, the Lost Soul and the Initiate will both be very weak to fire, so that's good. Um, hopefully that's enough to, to defend our city. So, okay, Seafaring is done, that's great. The Elasir has produced the Observatory, that's huge as well. Uh, really improving. You can see our knowledge income is just massively boosted. So that's fantastic. Um, observatory in our throne as well. So now, one thing I was thinking here. So with this stack, we could clear out the Shrine to the Wizard King and get the buff from this. And then we do have a Sphinx Temple, which is very tempting to perhaps try to clear out. Um, we might be a little bit underpowered at the moment. <clears throat> However, if we're able to clear this and get the buff, which would give us Life Drain... Uh, Elven King's Blessing and High Morale, uh, we might actually have a decent shot at this. So, I don't know. It's kind of a tough decision, but I'm going to definitely clear this out and see if we can at the very least get the buff going. So let's do that first. And again, the big question is going to be, do we really want to send um, this stack down towards Caradon's throne or... We had originally intended to send this group into the Shadow Realm to try to get a better foothold there. So I may just default to that, actually. We'll have to see. Okay, so they're moving up on us. Um, we've got Fanatic, Iconoclast, Prentice, and a Crusader. So we are in pretty good shape here, actually. So what I might do... Um, letting them come to me isn't the worst idea. Maybe I'll put... I stay a crap back here. Go like this. I think that puts us out of their range. Oh, not quite. Um, what I'll do here, though, is I will throw on the Touch of Faith for the Big Beetle, who's probably going to be my big fighting unit here, I think. Now, I don't want the Phantasm Warrior getting hit too much with the Apprentice's magic damage because, of course, even with our upgrade, the resistance is still a bit of a problem. Um, Outcast Slayer can do a Demoralize, which is good. And then we'll park kind of back here, just so that we're in, in range, ready to charge in as needed. So I think what we'll do is we'll just back up like this. Yeah, there we go. That's great. Um, we can park our Chieftain here, and we can throw on a Fire Plague. Um, I wouldn't mind maybe trying it... Yeah, can, now, can I step up one more? I can. I wouldn't mind trying it on the Crusader, perhaps. Let's do that. Nice. Okay, that's a good debuff there. All right, we'll end it and let them come to us. We are going to take a little bit of damage here from... Oh, okay, interesting. They just dispelled it. Okay, great. So now we're in a good position to be able to just flank these guys and get the kill that way. So that's great for us. Um, let's make that happen right here. So we'll just get that kill nice and easy. And now we can charge in and go after the Crusader without too much difficulty, which is great. The Iconoclast here, we can blast for some pretty heavy damage. So let's make that happen. Ooh, nice, and it's a critical. Fantastic. And then we can step up and hopefully get the kill. Amazing. Okay. That's really good for us now. Um, one thing I am going to do, though, is with my hero, I would love to get enough experience to perhaps level up. Um, so I'm going to just step up like this, move my hero up here, and then I should... Now... Oh, yeah, that's right. It's immune to spirit damage. I should have known. Um, we could cast a spell. We could go with Smite, but that's not going to work there. 
Um, we could do our Bestow Iron Heart. I just worry that um, the healing won't be as effective. But you know what? That's fine. Let's do that. Um, now, one thing we can do, however, is we can try to ensnare them in a net. Okay, they resisted. That's all right. Um, and then let's just charge in there. Or maybe a better idea would be to just park in defense mode like this. Okay. Okay, barely any damage there. And they fumbled. Oh, man. They, we took, like, almost no damage. So that's totally fine. Um, as I said, I would love to get some experience with my hero if possible. So one thing I could do is actually jump in behind, flank them. And then get the kill with my hero, which would be amazing. Excellent. Getting very, very close to a level up, which is perfect. Um, we can tie up the apprentice with our slaver. You know what? We could even probably get behind them for the extra flank damage. Fantastic. Um, and then let's grab our chieftain now. Move over here and soften him up just a little bit more. I suspect that's going to be enough for them to just die next turn. They may just sit in defense mode, but I'm guessing they're going to attack. Yeah, there it is. Okay, great. Well, we got to level up with our slaver at the very least, so that's good. Again, the hero not quite enough to level up, unfortunately, but... So that's really good. Um, this stack is in great shape. Now, we've got the buff for everybody... So we've got Elven King's Blessing, which means our ranged attacks do more spirit damage. Uh, we've got High Morale, and everybody has Life Drain, which is huge. So now the big question, do we want to risk going for the Sphinx Temple? I mean, honestly, I really do. I think this would be good for us. So this could give us a massive boost early in the game here. Again, it's a risky... Ooh, and, and it's risky because we've got two Tier 3 monsters, a Sarcoculus and a Moloculus, as well as four watchers or excuse me watchlings all of whom have a pretty nasty melee attack as well as spirit blast and petrifying touch this could really go south if we aren't careful but we also have to worry about immolation as well so we may end up losing a unit or two but boy if we can get this battle done that would be absolutely fantastic all right so um we definitely want our Beetle Knight to probably be our main unit to fight with. So let's buff our Beetle Knight. Um, our Epsilon Warrior is going to be considered expendable, as is our Phantasm Warrior, I'm thinking. Um, mainly because I can summon another one if needed. Uh, let's debuff the Moloculus if we can. Okay. Uh, our Slaver as well. Ooh, we can't use Demoralize because none of these units are... Uh, applicable that we don't have archer infantry irregular or pikemen we just have monsters so that's good to know um let's step up here and then we should just be able to wait again um aura unfortunately doesn't have any casting points to use this bat this round but we do have with uh lux we could do a divine protection next turn or an instant wrath as well we could try a smite I'm thinking Divine Protection wouldn't be the worst idea, just really buffing the resistance. Um, Alright, so let's see what happens next. At least the same unit got hit with the Immolation again. Oh! And our Phantasm Warrior, you can see that resistance just... Um, okay, that's fine. We're taking Punishment, but really aside from the Phantasm Warrior, everything we took was pretty manageable. Um, so the big thing is going to be getting our Beetle Knight in there. And what I want to do here is probably throw on either Instant Wrath or Divine Protection. Um, now the Divine Protection would provide Spirit, that extra Spirit Protection. Um, let me see, the Moloculus does do a decent amount of Spirit dam uh, of, excuse me, of Elemental type damage. And so I think I will do that. I think that's going to provide a really good protection for the Beetle Knight. So I'm going to charge in there. This is a bit risky, honestly, but I think it's worth doing. Um, we're going to charge in like this, go after him, and then we're going to bring the slaver in to try to help as well. Everyone's going, ooh, nice, big damage there. Epsilon Warrior is going to charge in as well over on this side. 
do a defensive strike. Ooh, that hurt. But again, we're okay. Um, our hero's already done his thing. Our Phantasm Warrior, like I said, probably going to have to be a sacrifice. Um, let's see. Our Chieftain can step up and help out a little bit. Uh, you know what? We can go over here and let's blast the Moloculus for a little bit of work. Nice. Charge in over there. As I said, the Phantasm Warrior, I'm okay if it does uh, get killed here. Nice. Okay, same unit getting blasted with the Immolation. Oh, ouch. Ooh, our poor Slaver. No. I think our Slaver's going to die here. Oh, wow. That critical hit, though. Oh, even we almost got it with the life steal. That would have been great. Well, we did our best. I mean, losing the slaver is unfortunate, but like I said, I was fully expecting to uh, lose a unit this fight. So let's hit this Sarcoculus for some damage. Very nice. Um, the Maloculus needs to needs to die as well. Um, our hero is just kind of in the back, so uh, it'd be good to get up and see if we can help a little bit. Let's see. Um. Maloculus. Yeah, and you can't flank them, unfortunately, just the way that they are. Um, the hero could charge in and do some damage to the Sarcoculus. Fortunately, though, this Beetle Knight is in a bad spot. Um, I think what I'm going to do is... Let's see. Would, we would, we would two-hit this thing, most likely. All right, let's do it. Oh, and we one-hit it. That's great. That critical was huge. Um, that just made things a lot better for us here. This Phantasm Warrior being uh, stunned is not great. All right, let's see. We can blast the Sarcoculus for some damage. Very good. Now the question, could Lux get in there and get the kill? Eh, it's not really a guarantee, so I'm not going to do that. I don't want to risk putting my hero in a bad spot like that. Instead, what I'm going to do is probably just continue doing some damage here. So let's just light him up. Okay. A little nervous, but I think we'll be fine. Okay. Our Phantasm Warrior, unfortunately, was killed. Oh, no. Our support unit was petrified as well. That's not good. Okay. Our Epsilon Warrior is going to die if we don't finish the battle this turn. Or get a heal on him, at least. Um, Alright, so let's kill the Watchling here. If we can. Nice. Okay. Now, we can step over like this and kill the Watchling or maybe the Sarcoculus. I'm thinking if we put our hero there, we will be able to get a heal onto our Epsilon Warrior. Oh, this is so unfortunate. Like, we might end up losing, actually, more units than I wanted here. Um, good thing is we'll get some lifesteal when we land the hits, but... Uh, this Watchling, yeah, is not going to be enough to get the kill. Um, the Sarcoculus, we can probably... F we'd finish him in two hits, but might kill us on the Retaliation. So I think it's probably better if we go here on this Watchling and try to two-hit it. Nice. Okay, we got some good healing at least. Now, the big question is, do we want to just kill the Sarcoculus knowing that this Watchling will probably come over and kill the Epsilon Warrior? Or... Yeah, you know what? I think that's going to be best. Oh, man. This Sarcoculus hits like a truck, though. Oh, there we go. Okay, we can do it this way. That's better. Amazing. Okay. Now, between the fire... Oh, I guess the Immolation ran out. Okay, well, this guy's probably going to come over and kill our... Yep. Oh, that's too bad. Well, okay. We lost one more unit than I would have preferred, but um, I still think this was worth it. Let's, uh, let's get a heal on somebody here. We'll throw it on our Chieftain. And then we can get the finish with our Cavalry here. Just get them going for a charge. Amazing. Well, that was a, a bit more costly than I would have liked. But let's see. Hopefully the reward we get is pretty good. Oh, look at this. Okay, a Frost Wyvern, which is a great mount that gives flying and frost protection. And a ton of knowledge. This is huge. We could do it for the gold, but I, I want that knowledge. I think that's going to be a game changer. Uh, this mount is really good for my Tigran as well, because we have that inherent frost weakness. Um, not to mention now we have that extra mobility. So that is amazing. Very, very happy. Uh, we got a level up as well with our hero. 
And I think I'll go with Sacred Arms, which provides that extra spirit strength for the stack. So now it's unfortunate we lost more units than I wanted. Good news is we can add in this uh, Sabertooth Chariot and the stack will then still... Oh, and we can't quite make it back to the... I was thinking we could run back to the Hayesberries maybe. That's too bad. Well, shoot. Um, the good news, though, is we can head down and go for this uh, Watchtower, maybe. And then once we clear the Watchtower, we might be able to turn around, go to the Hayesberries, and uh, maybe head into the Shadow Realm. So we'll bring the Chariot down to join in. And now at least we've still got... The only problem is we've got just ch uh, Cavalry units and a support. So it'd be nice to have, like, a melee fighter. That's where if we, if we had kept that Epsilon Warrior alive, that would have been great. Good news, though, is we can summon a Phantasm Warrior to perhaps... Um, add in so all right well uh, let's look at our research choices here so look at that we've got now the knowledge to be able to just uh, take on a bunch of these upgrades if we really wanted so um, you know what summon fantastic creature would be great to get and then we could also maybe do school of teleportation I mean those two alone would be huge um, yeah I mean let's do that so Summon Fantastic Creature. And then look at that. We can still do School of Teleportation in a single turn. And that improves our support units dramatically. And then, you know what? The other thing I wouldn't... Ooh, Shadow Realm Advantage. Let's see this. Cosmos makes all units gain Shadow Walker to become immune to Shadow Sickness in the Shadow Realm. Additionally, Archer, Infantry, Irregular, and Pikemen gain Shadow Running. Now, that could come in handy later on. I mean, for now, we're not going to worry about it, but... Um, one thing I wouldn't mind, though, is getting uh, extra casting points at this stage. I think that would be helpful, especially since we are trying to summon so many units. And then I'll probably try and grab magical structures after that. So let's go for sorcery here. Um, all right, well, really, really good work there from um, our Theocrat stack. It's just unfortunate we lost a few of those units. But again, I think what we got out of that was probably worth the uh, worth the loss. Um, now, as I said, let's send a, a diplomatic message over to Caradon here. I'm going to negotiate with him and try for a peace treaty. We're going to send that proposal over. And we'll add in open borders, I guess. And let's see if he likes that. All right. Um, now, up here, I was thinking we could head down toward Caradon's throne. The only problem, of course, is that um, all these structures are going to be explored already, which means we won't have the opportunity for continued uh, gaining experience as well as growth of our units. So I think it might be better to temporarily head north, do some clearing of other things around here, and either that or we head back underground. We don't even know what's under there, I don't think. Let me check. Yeah, we have no idea. So that might be a viable option for us as well. So let's take... Uh, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, before I decide what to do with our rogue, let's jump over and actually finish off the throne city here of Melenis. Because again, that if this battle... you know, Presumably it should go okay, but if it were not to go well, that might dictate some of my decision making. So let's get this one done. Okay, so everybody's going to just move on over. And then we'll engage the battle here. Again, we shouldn't have too much trouble, but you never know. The The trick here is we've got a, a handful of units that can make it over the wall without too much trouble, including our spiders who can climb the wall pretty easily. Um, all right, so I'm thinking the game plan is going to be to rotate our rocks around this way and try to get a foothold in behind the wall. So... Let's kind of do that. We'll just move our rocks on over like this. Um, spider can go with them as well. I want the Melia to come along just in case they need some healing. Meanwhile, over here, we've got the Ogre Savant. Uh, can start breaking the walls because I believe it has Demolisher. Or Wall Crushing, I should say. Um, yeah, that's great. And now has Phase and Projectile Resistance, so... Uh, can get over the wall very easily as well. So maybe we don't even worry about breaking the wall. That would just allow some of my other troops to get in there. So, um, yeah, I think if we just rotate everybody over, um, that's going to be the smart the smart move. 
And the reason I'm thinking rotating is going to work is that it buys us a bit of time. We can get in over the walls and then kind of set ourselves up so we're not just getting mobbed immediately upon um, trying to get over the wall there. I'll move my Phantasm Warrior down just to kind of draw maybe some aggro because the Phantasm Warrior can make it over the wall pretty easily. Uh, I think it has Phase Wall or whatever that ability is called. Um, Tarzan will keep his spells so that he can heal if needed. Our smuggler can move over this way as well. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this looks so far. So let's see what Melenis does. Melenis may also do some spell casting. We'll have to see. Okay, blasting my units a little bit. Nothing too crazy. That's good, though. Some of the units are staying down there to face the Phantasm Warrior. Most of them are rotating over, which is smart to address my units kind of doing over this over here. Um, so here, we can get the rock in behind the wall. Um, the savant as well. We'll, we'll get the uh, spider baby. Um, might as well get them up on the wall as well. Um, Melia can cruise that way. Get Karzan over here. Now, as for the ogre, we could just phase in and be, be in the wall already. But I think what I'll do is I'll wait one more turn. So we'll cruise over like this. Like I said, I just want kind of everybody to move this way so we can get a foothold. There it is. Um, we'll move our healing support that way as well, including Quora. Uh, the Nymph who can seduce. Probably not going to play much of a role in this battle and, uh, at this point, but uh, we will move our Phantasm Warrior here. We're going to take a, a hit. There's almost no uh, way around that, but I think this will be fine. What I mean is that this, um, yeah, here it is. Okay, that magic shield is coming into play, though. That's good. Ouch. Okay, so now we're in really good shape. The units that we have here can actually... Oh, yeah, we've got this Eternal Guard who is a little bit scary. Um... We could teleport in with our Savant, though. And, ooh, wow. They actually do quite a lot of damage. Uh, you know what? Let's see. Maybe we can web them. Okay, no such luck. Um, we will put our Savant maybe in defense mode. And our Rock, I suppose, could charge over and just get a, get some damage. Um, I'm a little nervous, though, just because, uh, again, it's a pikeman against a um, mounted unit, which obviously generally doesn't end super well. We'll blast him for a little bit of damage, at least. Um, our smuggler can cruise over, do a little bit of work, too. Not that that's really that helpful. Um, our rock, as well, can cruise there. And provide support next turn. Spitting Spider. Uh, Quora can move over. And the question is spell casting, but for now we're going to just hold off. This Melia is going to just keep moving. Now, we could jump in there and go after the reanimator here, which not the worst idea ever. Um, yeah, let's, let's tie him up. Again, if we lose the Phantasm Warrior, I'm not too upset. Okay. I'm a little nervous about my spider over here. Ooh, yeah, and the hero's gonna come in, too. Oh, man, Assassin's Strike hits hard. Yikes. Jeez. I hope my savant doesn't die here. Oh, no. Okay, my spider's still alive, thank goodness, but barely. Yeah, my ogre really got smacked good there. That's not great. Um, all right, well, we can flank the hero here for some heavy damage. So, let's get a charge going. There it is. Nice. Okay, the hero's toast. Uh, this eternal guard needs to die, though. So, let's see. Step up. Go here. Do some damage. Turn him around, at least, which is good. Um, ideally, what I'd like to do, though, is 
finish him off perhaps with ranged attacks. I just don't know if that's going to be possible. No, unfortunately not. Uh, Quora might be able to help with that though. Yes, there it is. Perfect, okay. That gives me a chance now to at least retreat the spider baby back as much as we can. And the ogre out of there. And now the rock can cruise in and attack the lost soul. No problem there. That's great. Um, Phantasm Warrior down here can just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the reanimator. There it is. Nice. Good kill and a level up, too. That's great. Melly is moving over. Nymph is moving over. Uh, there's nobody really for us to heal out here, which is kind of unfortunate, but... So just cruise in there. All right. I mean, if we lose the spider baby, it's not the end of the world, but it does suck because that's a unit that can be um, promoted, obviously. Yikes, our hero taking a bit of punishment. That's not ideal. Good damage from the rock. Unfortunately, we took a bit, though. Um, all right, so spider baby can get up on the wall, maybe. Um, our ogre could jump over and help, but I don't want to necessarily risk it. Um, the animator up there needs to die. You know what? Well, we could just charge in here like this. I, I don't mind this. Let's go like that. Big damage. That's amazing. Um, now we could start banging on this door if we really wanted. We could even use our ogre to do it up from the other side as well. Um, so the really, the only threat here is this lost soul being able to perhaps jump over causes some grief. We could hit the Hulk and the Lost Soul for some damage. Let's do that. Nice. Not a ton, mind you, but at least a little bit there. Um, Aura can jump over. Hit the Hulk for a bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then you know what? Our Ogre can get the kill here. Shoot. And that still means, though, that our Rock can't quite... Alright, well, we'll do it anyway. Um... Let's get the kill with the rock. Okay, great. And then we can step over here with the ogre in defense mode. Amelia can heal Karzan, who took some punishment. This one over here... Nah, there's not really any more healing to do. Um, I don't think our nymph's going to get to seduce anything, unfortunately, but... Spitting Spider can hop, hop up on the wall to get ready. And our smuggler can do some damage to the gate, at least. Hunter Spider Baby's just going to stay out of trouble. And our Phantasm Warrior's just going to hang out as well. Like, probably going after the rock, yeah, for that flank shot. That makes sense. Um, now, one thing we could do is teleport out here and drop a big heal on our Spider Baby, so I will do that. That's lovely. And then, uh, Spitting Spider now can get up on the wall... Get a huge flank shot and a kill, probably. Yep, there it is. Amazing. Well, very nice. We managed to clear out the throne without too much trouble. We didn't lose any of our units, and we now have a gold medal rock, which is very good. Um, quite happy with that outcome. Let's see what we got for items here. The blowpipe will keep with Karzan, so he's got now two different ranged options, which is good for him. Um, all right, well, let's take the throne. Fantastic. Okay. Um, now, of course, that doesn't kick Melenis out of the game because Melenis is still... Uh, Melenis herself is still out there somewhere. Uh, as for what to do with the city, I guess we will purge it to nomads. That only takes two turns. So let's make that happen. All right. So now the question is, how do we want to proceed? I think one army should probably head over to this city, which is our former orc vassal that, that was taken from us. And the other should probably head over here, and we can see if we can find uh, the enemy forces. So I'm thinking Quora might be best to just go this way, and Karzan can head over here. So I, I am a little bit scared to split my units, but I think it will be fine. We'll go over here. Um, now we can start working on another fantastic creature, or uh, our first fantastic creature, I should say. So let's do that. Um, 
Your lasser. Okay, so we have a production choice to make over here. Uh, let's see. Well, you know what? Before we do that, let's finish our battling and exploring and whatnot, because we may get some additional resources. Ooh, units are moving around over here. Okay. Well, I'm going to take a risk and go into the open ground here. Let's see what we find. Ooh, it looks like we might have a neutral city over here we can make contact with, so we'll do that. Um, Asbandaria finished its intelligence corner. Now that means we can now make the outlaw oil occultist. And if I remember correctly, this uh, upgrade also buffs our smuggler units. They would now gain an additional rank. They get backstab and plus one, plus one vision range. So the smuggler is now a better unit. Uh, getting backstab is a big deal. And uh, even just getting that extra promotion is kind of nice. So we could crank these guys out if we needed to. And having the outlaw oil occultist as a very good tier 3 support unit that now has access to phase and projectile resistance is also very good. Um, but I ultimately, I do want the slaver camp. That's going to be the next thing I want to do for the for Asbandaria. We just don't have enough gold currently. So uh, let me pan over and grab our uh, wisps here and see if maybe we can find any additional... Ooh, and there's some gold. Great. Let's grab it. Nice. Okay, that's huge. Um, now, this wisp is actually pretty close to this one over here. Um, I'm trying to think what would be best to explore. Don't want them to necessarily converge into the exact same spot, so maybe we go up this way. Kind of like this, yeah, and that way we can at least see what's up here. Meanwhile, this one I think would be better to maybe turn around and go kind of south. So let's do that. Um... Just looking what else. So, okay, for our rogue, I think we will head north along the road here and see what we can find. Um, there is a watchtower over there. We can clear that out. And then once we've got that clear, um, we can figure out what to do next. It'll improve our vision as well, which is good. Nice. Okay, we've got a lava river to follow, so let's kind of do that a little bit. Okay. Um, we've got another one underground over here. Yep. Let's see if maybe we can find a way out. Oh, great. Okay, this is fantastic. I was worried we were going to be trapped in that uh, magma area permanently, so we'd have to, like, double back like we already had to once. Um... I think we had do we I think we might have one more wisp out there. Let me just see. Grab this. We're just gonna pan to all of our units. Yeah, here's the other one. Okay, great. Um, well, you know, this is a good opportunity. We can explore around the city here. Oh, great. Okay, and there's a uh haste berries, and we know that that Eldritch Pit is there. Yeah, okay, lots of stuff for us to do around here. That's good. Lost library right here. We can work on that too. That's gonna be good. Um, all right, so production, let's focus on our throne city first. So obviously an incoming army, that's going to be a bit of a problem for us. But there's nothing we can really do in, in, the, in the short term here to help us. We could do a commoner, but they're going to attack us probably next turn. So that's not even going to matter. Um, so why don't we just keep focusing on development then, since we know that that's not really going to be viable. Um, we don't have enough gold for a master's guild, but we do have enough if we wanted to do... Um, Public baths or, or a stone wall is an example there. Um, getting one additional domain radius here wouldn't be terrible. That would get us closer to these mi uh, gold mines. And the city is going to grow in 24 turns. So uh, still a ways off, but that would get us closer. Um, what else do we have here in the throne? Uh, well, you know what? Maybe for now we leave the throne alone and we focus on our other cities. You know, in, in particular, this Tigran one, I quite like this city, and I think developing it a bit further would be good. If we do the observatory, that would then bring the Flow Rock Quarry into the domain once it grows, once this is complete. And that would make it uh, much easier to then have better production going on. We'd get up to 85. City will grow in 14 turns, so that could be pretty good. I think we should do it. There it is. So in the throne for now, um, we could do the Sand Tower. 
it could be helpful if the city ever does get attacked again. Um, not the worst idea. We could get an apprentice going as well. Uh, does have bestow conjuring regen. Uh, heals a magical origin unit, so any of my summoned units would get benefit from this. Um, could be useful. Magic lamp. Grants the holder or whomever the target unit is with unexpected luck and an additional ranged combat ability randomly assigned. That's kind of neat. That could definitely come in handy, but again, I think for now um, we'll just hold the money. As Bandari, we don't have enough for the slaver camp. Um, so I think we will just do merchandise. Um, now over here, we could work on something. City's going to grow in 12 turns. Um, Builder's Hall might be good just to get that additional production boost. Kind of speed up production of things. Or the storehouse to just grow the city faster. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's go for the storehouse. All right, now, uh, this guy's pretty much done everything he can, so we'll just tell him to stay put there, I think. All right, so that's going to end the turn. Now, like I said, my big concern is going to be the throne here, and we are going to end up in a battle. So at least I'm almost certain that's going to happen. We will wait and see, but I see no reason why Melenis isn't going to at least try it. So a little bit of a, you know... Uh, eye for an eye. We took Melenis's throne. I suppose she's going to try and take mine. But we shall see. Okay. Caradon declined my proposal, so still not ready to make peace, I guess. Oh, there it is. Okay. Probable defeat. All right. Well, I think spell casting is going to have to you know, play a role in this one for sure. So, all right. Uh, the, the Eventide Archer is going to be um, a major concern for us. We are definitely going to have to worry about that unit now what i'm thinking we, we're only going to get one shot with this so you want to maximize the damage so probably the initiate would be the best target and i'm thinking that because the eventide archer uh, is going to take less damage from it we could kill the lost soul in one go but of course this unit's going to revive so one thing i might want to do though is wait until they aren't in defense mode so i'm gonna there's no rush i can hold off on it and we'll just park these two in behind there. So, all right. Let's let them get a touch closer. That Eventide Archer is pretty scary, though, admittedly. Um, Civic Guard can do some blasting. Let's try and light up that Initiate for a little bit of damage. And we could use our pistol shot from here, but um, what kind of damage does this do? Minimum is going to be 20 maximum is going to be more than that we're going to be almost 30 29 i guess um so if we were to hit him that would get us pretty close to then ensuring we get the kill but i think maybe you know what though the pi the pistol does have a cooldown, so if we use it now that might be good and we can just wait and start reloading it so let's blast the initiate there it is okay again i'm nervous about yeah we're going to take some firepower here ouch there it is, okay. So what we're gonna do now though is we can throw the fireball on somebody. Um Oh, you know what? I realize now I shouldn't have been attacking the initiate because this fireball does so much damage. Yeah, let's just do this. Okay, there's that kill. At least we helped a little in one way. Um the lost soul can make it in to attack us, so I'm gonna put the wisp there to guard the civic guard. We'll just soften him up a little. And then I'm going to retreat my smuggler back. Um, there it is. Okay, that's fine. Now, I'm guessing the Eventide Archer will move over. Yeah, there it is. Ooh, and we got hit with a stiffened limbs, I think. I see the mist there. Okay, the Wisp doing a good job, though, of tanking that damage. Um, should be able to kill the Lost Soul here, I think. Let's do that. There we go. Um, Eventide Archer now, we can start blasting. One thing we can do is move the Smuggler over, get the flank shot here. Nice. And then follow that up with a blast from the Civic Guard for a flank there. 
Now, unfortunately, this Phantasm Warrior being um, crippled is, is really, really devastating because I wanted this Phantasm Warrior to head out and engage the Eventide Archer uh, in melee combat, but that's going to be very difficult now. And I suspect the Eventide Archer is going to probably finish off the Wisp, which is going to make my life harder as well. Oh, wow. Spellcasting. Okay. Ouch. Oh, that sucks. And we got immolated there. I um, wonder if we were to move here. Oh, we still have that range penalty. Shoot. Well, I think being there is better, though, because at least then we've got the... Um, the smuggler's going to fall back. Let's just put the Phantasm Warrior out there, even if it means the Phantasm Warrior is going to get hit. Um, I think we need to just try and get close enough to them. Oh, Fireball. Jeez. Man, the spell casting is really screwing me over here. Um, Smuggler can cruise over here. Park there to stop the respawn. Oh, and of course, we don't have enough to do max damage. I uh, will do it anyway, and then we'll step out. I suspect they're just going to kite us, though, which is going to be really annoying. Okay, we tanked it at least. Oh, that hurts. Oh, nice. Okay, we can get close enough to at least engage them in melee, though. Um, Smuggler's going to have to just stay put. Phantasm Warrior can at least... Well, the retaliation might almost be enough to kill us. Um, now, what's that chance to be shocked? What does that inflict? Let me see. Inflict shocking. Melee and range attacks can cause the target to be shocked. Shock units lose minus 8 movement. Gain 40% shock weakness for 2 turns. Now, that would be very helpful if we could land it. Um, I think we'll go... Oh, you know, the only thing is, I'm worried if we're going to get hit with another spell here, but... Because um, I'm thinking if we go in defense mode, that's harder to kill us, and we're still going to get uh, an attack in. Yeah, let's do that. They're going to use it and step off to then blast us, though. That's going to be almost the guarantee of what happens. But Oh, okay. that's Well, that's interesting. I was not expecting that. Um, yeah, I, think, I don't think there's any way for us to win this one, sadly. Oh, you know what I should have done? I just realized this. I should have used Dispel on the Stiffen Limbs. Oh, that... Yeah, that's a critical mistake, unfortunately. Uh, and if we step over here, then this Lost Soul is going to respawn. If we stay there, we're just going to take tons of damage, though, which isn't good. You know what? Okay, we're going to... Hmm. So if we go here... I'm just curious. How much damage do we do? That's pretty good. The problem is then this unit's going to spawn behind us and flank us and kill us. And then the archer is going to finish us off. Oh, that is so annoying. Yeah. Oh, that's frustrating. I was hoping we'd get a, a critical, but we didn't. And now it's just going to kill us here. Yeah. Yep. Man, that's annoying. Well, shoot, shame on me, I guess. Well, we lost our throne. Yeah, that's very, very unfortunate. Um, domain invasion at Hoden. Where's that? Is that our... Oh, over here. Oh, look at this. Oh, and here's Melenis herself. Okay, well, um, we should be able to hopefully finish Melenis off. I'm kind of surprised she didn't attack me. Oh, I guess she's not quite strong enough to do that, but... Um, well, we lost our throne, but we should be able to hopefully eliminate Melenis here. We will see, though. We're going to have to get that back, obviously, in the near future. Again, you know, I, I should have handled that battle differently. That was kind of a mistake on my part. Um, let's see. We're better at governing High Elves. Either the... High Elf Longbowmen and Hunters gain extra range damage, or Shooting Grounds provide extra population. Um, I think we'll go with the extra population, because I don't expect we're going to be using a lot of Longbowmen. Um, domain Invasion, yep, that's here. Melenis' troops. Oh, and we've got some Ne'er-do-wells over there as well. Some roaming units. Um, we've got a Tribute... 
From gold or a small army. You know what? I will take the small army and then I will send them on a mission to try to reclaim our throne. So Caradon has declined our proposal, which is unfortunate. So we lost the throne city. Um, now the big thing is we just have to make sure that Quora does not die. Um, this is a sentry dire vulture. So really, Melenis does not have much in the way of strong units. Now, my only concern here, if we move over and attack this, I think we'd still have enough movement left. Let me see. We go here. Oh, yeah, we're fine. Because um, I want to finish this off to protect the city from being captured. So we will do this. Just finish this battle quickly, and then we can turn around. Get rid of Melenis. And then hopefully that will kick her out of the game, because I don't think she's had time to migrate her throne city over. Um, so we've got the Pilferer and the Reveler. Uh, we could try for a Seduction. Let's see here. Any of these? This is all Tier 1, I think. Um, the Reveler does have minor Bard skills, which is kind of cool. Um, honestly, though, I just want these units to die. I don't really want to... All right, we will just let them come to us one more time here. There it is. Okay. So they're just going to step a little closer. That's fine. And now we should be able to really put the hurt on him here. So um, we should be able to get the kill like this. Very nice. Um, Aura can step up. Blast this one. Um, see, what does this do? That's not so good. So let's do the... Very good. I am up here. Nice. Uh, spitting Spider can cruise around. Get the kill that way. Amazing. Good level up there for our Spitting Spider. And then the Melia and the Nymph and guard our hero. Ouch. Melia took some damage, but we can just do a nice big self-heal, which is fine. We can try for a seduction, because why not? Oh, there we go. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, happy to have an extra unit. We can use it to eventually guard the city if we wanted. There we go. All right, so then we will regroup and head back over here. And then we will step back one and make sure that everybody's coming in, coming into this fight. And let's use Karzan to engage it. There it is. Okay, let's do it. Now, the big thing we have to watch out for here is that if Quora gets killed, we lose the game. So, can't let that happen. Now, conversely, I think if we kill Melenis, the game is over for her as well. So... Let's just make sure we get that done. There's Melenis, so we'll make a beeline for her. Um, as I said, I just have to make sure Quora stays alive. Arzan could do a Magic Fist. That does a pretty good amount of damage, actually. Um, yeah, let's charge in there. Like I said, um, big goal is just to get her out of the game, so... We are going to go with Karzan, throw the Magic Fist down. There it is. Um, we can charge in like this with our Rock. Big damage there. Only 11 health left. Our Spitting Spider might even be able to do very... Well, not a ton of damage, but a little bit. Pretty good. And then can Korra maybe get in there? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Not enough for the kill. Don't know if we have anybody else... Ooh, we have our Smuggler. Our smuggler can get in there a bit closer. Get a pistol shot. Four damage. Okay, and what is this going to do? Oh, it's not going to do enough. Dang it. What about this? Oh, there, that's better. Nice, and there's the battle. That's what I thought. All we had to do was kill Melenis, and it's over. Excellent. Okay, well... It's unfortunate we lost our throne, but 
Malenis is dead. And let's see, we can loot her items here. Ooh, and she's got some half-decent stuff. Holy Champion. Um, ooh, a Vengeful Siron Lancer. Does, uh, oh, you get um, Inflict Shadow Sickness and plus two shock damage, as well as Shadow Demon Slayer. That's pretty decent. Um, Magical Tome of Counteraction. Dispel Magic, True Sight, Control Undead. Blizzard on a Stick. And Black Wand. We might want to spread these uh, around to some of our other heroes, but, like, um, if we go back to Korra, I don't think she has... Oh, I guess she... Uh, our Rogue has two options here for items. Korra has two, so I suppose not too bad to keep multiple with Karzan. Um, I will maybe send this over to my... Yeah. I'm going to send the Poison Spit over to my Theocrat, however. Well, that's great. Okay, so, um, really good shape. Now we just have to try and reclaim our throne. Um, we got a level up for Quora. She's now level 7. Um, that gives access to floating, which is a good one. If Eventually, if we have a, a full stack of flying and floating and magic units, we, that'll be really useful. For now, though, I don't think we need it. Um, inflict stun is pretty solid. Melee and ranged attacks can cause the target to be stunned. We're going to grab that. That's a really good upgrade. Phase is also useful, but we'll save that. All right, great. Um, so yeah, like I said, the big, the big thing now is just going to be step one, getting our throne city back. And then step two is going to be trying to recover this orcish vassal. Um which would be good to get our hands back on. Uh, we also want to grab this city as well, since it's in the neighborhood. So, let's see. We can move Karzan's stack. Like I said, I think the original plan is still pretty good. We'll move Karzan's group and have them head down this way. I think there's going to be a path if we follow this road, though. Yeah, there it is. And there's stuff we can clear out on the way, so that's really good. Korra will probably go maybe over this direction. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to be strong enough with these little miscellaneous units here, so we may need to actually reinforce, but, um, I think this is a good place to leave the episode. So, an unfortunate turn of events that we did lose our throne, but we managed to get Melenis out of the game. So, all in all, I'm not too upset about it. Um, a little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. So, we'll just zoom out and, um, take a look. So, yeah, big, big objectives are to reclaim our throne reclaim Zardor and get uh, Ephinderlon as a new city. We've also got Nurm here. I didn't see that before. So Nurm is a... Oh, it's a little orc um, outpost. Well, we'll definitely try to get that as well. So good options there. And um, Caradon is not making peace with us, so we'll have to see how that goes. But as I said, we will save it right here. Call this one Episode 7. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.